I'm going to read two scriptures. One is going to be from Psalm 119 and 165. And then we're going to move to Titus chapter 3 and verse 9. Psalms 119 and 165 is uh, pretty familiar, I believe, to most everyone. It just simply says, Great peace have they which love thy law. And everybody say, Nothing. Nothing. Shall offend them. Yeah. Great peace have they which love thy law. And nothing shall offend them. Let's go to Titus chapter 3 and verse 9. Titus chapter 3 and verse 9. But avoid foolish questions and genealogies and contentions and strivings about the law, for they are unprofitable and vain. I want to read that same one from the Message Bible. It says, stay away from mindless, pointless quarreling over genealogies and fine print in the law code that just simply gets you nowhere. Amen. I'm, you can be seated. I want to speak tonight for a few minutes. The spirit of contention. The spirit of contention. What exactly is content, uh, contention? Well, it's anger and disagreement. And it could lead to a heated argument. But the Bible, as we read, says, Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. See, when the spirit of contention is manifesting, or in other words, where there is contention in the air. How many's ever been in a room that you knew there was yes. contention? Yeah. How many's ever been into a church where you knew yes. there was contention? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Uh, and with contention in the air, this is what happens. It doesn't. It, it does not matter whether you talk or not, and it does not matter what you say or how you said it. If you talk then that becomes the subject of the contention in the sense of not just what you said, but especially how you said it. Did you hear how he said that? Did you hear how she said that? It just adds to that. Or that's if you talk. But if you do not talk, then it becomes, don't tell me you have nothing to say about this or that. That's like you're doomed if you do, you're doomed if you don't. So, so how do you deal with the issue of contention? How, how, do you, how do you resist the spirit of contention? Well, we read in Psalms 119, 165, Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing, nothing shall offend them. I want to read that from the New Living Translation. Those who love your instructions have great peace and do not stumble. Or the Message Bible tells us, for those who love what you reveal, everything fits, no stumbling around in the dark for them. It all goes back to great peace have they which love thy law. I think we all know this, but offenses, they cause people to stumble. But offenses cause us to stumble, cause people to stumble. I mean, but, but think about this and consider this, how great the peace Jesus had at the time of his crucifixion. Such peace. To the extent that whatever they did or, or, or whatever they said to him or, or how they said it, it did not stir up an offense in him. What an example of peace. But in the middle of his crucifixion, he said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Father, forgive them. I mean, does this kind of response come out of an offended heart or mind? No. But it only comes out of a, of a heart or mind that, that, that have the love of law. 
that, that has that love in them. Amen. It's a great peace that they must love the law and nothing shall offend them. So how do you respond to what people say to you? Now, before I get any further, I'm not saying none of us ever get offended. I, mean, I believe that at some point, sometime, I, I, mean, I know I have, I've gotten offended. Right. And it, it depends on how I handle that offense, if it's going to go any further and cause us, well, it can eventually cause bitterness inside you. Amen. And it can be strife. And then it, it, it can spread. It, it, it can just take over. But how do you respond to what people say to you? Do you get offended and justify it by saying that, that you're offended because you just don't like how they said it? I mean, we, I think we've all been there. Yeah. Now, it, it does not mean that it's okay for people to talk in nasty ways to others, but we cannot really control how people talk to us. But we can control how we react to that. We, we have all the control on how we act. And a lot of times, the way we act, if we are truly in love with God, we, we slip up and we'll find ourselves begging God to forgive us. Because we, this, it overloads sometimes. It says things that may not have been... It may not be curse words or anything, but it says some very, sometimes those harsh words are even worse than the curse words. Because they can hurt deeper than anything else. So, it, it, I mean, we don't let people run over us. Don't get me wrong. We don't, you know, but, but it's how we handle the situation. We already know how that person is handling it. They've been, you know, they, they've caused an offense. But now it's our turn to be the bigger man or bigger woman. Days in and day out, we're, we're being constantly uh, subjected to, to all these things in various mixes. And Jesus went through them all until he got to the cross where all of them came on him. Sometimes people will talk to us in ways that, that we consider to be rude. And a lot of times, it's not intentional. But because of the pressures of life, how many times that how many times have we been under a lot of pressure? A lot of things going on in our life, and somebody says something to you, and what they said was really not offensive, but because we've allowed the pressures of life to overwhelm us, we take it as being offended. And and you know, but, but we've got to understand. That in Psalms 119, 165, not to get offended, but to walk in such a great peace that nothing of it, excuse me, <clears throat> that nothing offends us. Now, when I say nothing offends us, I don't mean we're supposed to be this perfect man or woman. But when nothing offends us, it means that we don't let it overwhelm us. We don't let it dominate our thoughts. We don't let it dominate our life, our way of being. And I know people that are like that, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. But we got to remember, you know, and, and to, not to get offended to where it, it dominates us. But we but we got to be quick to forgive as well. Amen. We have to be quick to forgive. Amen. Sometimes we want to ponder on something. Sometimes we want to think about it. Sometimes we got to take a whole lot of water just to swallow that pride. But we got to be quick to forgive. And it, it's choosing to forgive no matter what people do to us. As I mentioned in our Sunday school class, um, Sunday morning, you forgive somebody, you move on. Doesn't mean you go to the next backyard barbecue. Doesn't mean you, you you're becoming best of friends again or whatever. But you just forgive them and go on with your life. You you don't want that spirit of offense. You don't want that spirit of contention to stay there. You want to make sure that we move on and we truly forgive. 
And, 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 and let me shake your religion for just a second. Jesus said in Matthew 5, 44, to love who? Anybody remember? Your enemies. Love your enemies. Don't raise your hand, but how many others can think of an enemy or two? I hope that didn't bring up any evil thought. But you got to love them. No matter what they've done to you. No matter what they said about you, Amen. you've got to love them. Absolutely. You have to love them. How many want to get to heaven? Yeah. We've got to love our enemies. Right. But there's no, there's no debate there. You know, uh, it, it's, that's it. We've got to love our enemies. So, so what does that mean? The, this is what it means. The purpose of your enemies is to learn to love them. The purpose of your enemies is to learn to love better. God, why you got to send them? You know I don't like them people. Oh God, why did I have to see them in the store? I thought everything was going good today. He's trying to remind us that we got to love our enemies. But if you're saying things like that, I don't think you really truly forgave them. So then that goes to another area. You need to find, you, you need to forgive them. So that brings us, it, it, it's really just another lesson in the Lord's Prayer. You know, when we ask forgiveness from God, it was for our own good, right? When we ask God to forgive us, it's for our own good. It's to save us. God, forgive me of my sins. Create in me that clean heart. Renew that right spirit within me. Wash all my sins away, Lord. It, it's for our own good, right? Well, the same thing when we need to forgive others. It's not for them. It's for our own good when we forgive others. I think some, well, I know, sometimes we have a struggle in the spiritual life because we have unforgiveness in our heart. And that unforgiveness is turned into to something that's bitter. And when bitterness takes root, all the thing it can do is produce bitter fruit. Right, right, right. So then we wonder, well, why so and so? Why is that? Because of that bitterness that you're spewing out. Right. I mean, you know, you can see bitterness on somebody's face sometimes. Amen. And then it's proved when they open their mouth. Amen. I don't want to be that person. I don't want to. Be, I, I want to be known as a person that easily forgives others. Yes. And and trust me, as a pastor. <laughs> Well, Stephen, I just want to raise up the other hand sometime. But I gotta forgive. And when some of you offend me, I gotta I just gotta let it go like water off a duck's back. I just gotta let it go. We've got to learn to forgive. It's for our own good. And then let me say this: we cannot be healed. And we can never really move forward or move, move toward wholeness. We will never really get on with our lives and we turn, until we learn how to let go of the contention and the resentment until we give up gaining revenge and forgive. We can't move forward until we forgive. If there's some things in your life right now and you're, you're scrambling trying to figure out why, why you're going through this or, or why you're in it for such a long period of time. God, where are you at? Maybe there's some unforgiveness. Maybe there's some contention there. See, the spirit of contention, it, it can destroy from within. It, it does the same thing that, that, that anxiety or stress will do. It will destroy from within. It will cause things to become bitter. And then you'll eventually feel that, 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 that form of hatred. Because we didn't, as... Born flies, so we didn't nip it in the bud. We didn't take care of. Sometimes we want to take care of things by by by, by doing everything external. But in reality, we need to get to the root of the problem, and we need to pull that root out. 
and I and I challenge you sometimes, God. God, I, I, I know what's in me, and I, but you know, I mean, physically do this. Reach in right here to your chest and pull it out and say, God, I've been trying to deal with it externally, but now I'm going to pull this root out and I'm going to give you this root that's causing the evil, that's causing the condition, that's causing the anger, that's causing all the issues that I have. Give it to him. Give him that bitter root, that 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 uh, root of content, uh, uh, of, of anger, that root of contention. Give it to him. Yes. If you really want to love God, you're going to have to give it to him. Yeah. If you really want to hear him say, well done, uh, you're going to need to give it to him. Yes. <clears throat> you know, when we have been wrong, we need to look at who God is and what God has done for us. Right. Yes. That ought to be enough right there to say, I forgive you. And really mean forgiveness from here. You know, it's easy to say I forgive you from here. But only you and God knows if you forgave from here. So when we've been wrong, we, we, we need to look at who God is and what God has done for us. And let me ask you, what you, you, say, well, you don't know how many times this person has wronged me over the years. But how many times have you wronged God? And he was there quick to forgive. Yes, amen. So how many times have we wronged God? Yes. Or you may ask, him, you know, how far am I, how far am I to go with this forgiveness? How far is God going with you? We need to go that far. We need to go that far. We're, we're, we are to forgive them. Not because of who they are or what they've done, but because of who God is and what God has already graciously done for you and I. Amen. How many would agree it's hard to forgive sometimes? Yes. Amen. Yes. Absolutely. It's hard to. Yes. And, and as I mentioned Sunday, because this flesh, it don't like asking it don't like uh, it don't like offering forgiveness. It don't even like asking forgiveness to be honest. Because to ask forgiveness, you have to swallow some more pride. You have to become humble. There has to be humility involved. But look at Matthew chapter six and verse twelve, and this verse is right in the middle of the Lord's prayer. And in the middle of the Lord's prayer is a prayer that you and I. If, 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 if we're not careful, we'll just pray it as a motion when we say the Lord's Prayer. And right in the middle of the Lord's Prayer, it says, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Now, this is right in the middle of the Lord's Prayer. So what, what are we saying here when we do this? We're asking God to treat us. We're asking God to forgive us exactly the way that we deal with other people who have wronged us. What do you what do you think if we if we have issues with forgiving somebody we and, and God treats us that same way? <laughs> We're telling God right here, Lord, as I forgive. You know, forgive our debt as we forgive our debt. We're telling God to treat us that same way. Treat us how we forgive our debtors. Treat us, Lord, how we forgive those that wrong us. Treat us, Lord, how we forgive those that have lied on us. Treat us, Lord, as we forgive those that have blasphemed against us. Treat us is the same way that we treat others that have come against us and have hurt us. Lord, treat us the same way. That's what we're saying here. When we say, Lord, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Right. Right. Lord, could have swallowed. Oh. But that's, you know, but please forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. How do you forgive your debtors? How do you react? How do you act toward it? 
That's how we're telling God to treat us. The Bible says that we should grow in grace. St. Peter chapter 3 and verse 18, it says, But grow in grace, and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to him be glory both now and forever. Yes. See, the less we are offended by things that are thrown at us, the more we are lining up with the word in Psalms 119, 165. The less we are offended by things that are thrown at us, the more we're lining up with the Word of God. When we have grown in grace to the point that nothing offends us, then we finally have lined up with the Word of God. I'll say that again. That when we have grown in grace to the point where nothing offends us, then we have finally lined up with the Word of God. So we should grow in the grace of not becoming offended by growing how? In great peace. Yes. Growing in great peace. And you know what? We can choose not to get offended. Yeah. We can choose not to get offended, no matter how people talk to us. Yeah. Just like we choose to forgive, no matter the offense. Sure. So, we should take responsibility to deal with our own response to the things we face in life. We should take responsibility to deal with our own response to the things we face in life. Why? Because we do not have the means to control them all. That's right. We can't control them all. But contention must be avoided because it will generate only more contention. Contention, not only does it produce a loss of spiritual energy, it produces loss of physical energy. Just as I said earlier, and I've said in the past, as anxiety and stress, it can, it can affect you not just spiritually, but it affects you physically. It affects you mentally. It affects you emotionally. It, it affects you in all kinds of, in, in many areas. Which, if it does all that in the physical, then it's definitely going to affect uh, you in the spiritual. Because you're not going to feel like doing anything you're supposed to do for the Lord. You're going to be just, just God. Contention and offense go together. And the only thing they can create is strife. Contention and offense go together. And the only thing they can create is strife. But again, Psalms 119, 165, great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. How do you deal with spiritual contention? I know how I deal with it. I know how we should deal with it. But are we dealing with it in the way God wants us to do it? And that's just simply forgive. Forgive. And this tells us that the biblical, biblical answer to offense is to have great peace. And this great peace comes from loving the law of the Lord. Yeah. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Amen. How are we treating those that that are in contention with us? How, how are we treating those that are wrong with us? How are we treating those that have hurt us? How are we treating those that have said some things about you? See, when we say that forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors, that's what we're telling God. I know I'm repeating myself, but we're telling God, hey, treat me just the way I treat this person. <clears throat> The 
The spirit of contention can divide a church. Not only can it divide a church, it can destroy a church. I don't know about you, but I don't want the spirit of contention. I don't want it to overwhelm. I don't want it to to just to, to blanket me or us. But I want that great peace. And I want to love the word of God. Amen. Amen. Would you stand?